This is a true story of 13 strangers. who all watch reality TV. Pick to find out why they really watch. You watch for two weeks and you feel like you know them. They're overdramatic. I think they come up with a pretty high caliber of men. Something different than your normal sitcoms. My escape from reality. Obnoxious. They're your best friends. What they watch. I've always been really impressed with The Bachelor. The Bachelor. The Bachelor. The real world. MTV Real World, baby. The real world on MTV. Joe Millionaire. Joe Millionaire. Survivor. And to share what they really think about reality TV. We don't really want you here. They don't want you here. When they stop being polite. Don't want to be on your camera. And start. Okay, that's fine. That's yeah, I'll move. Getting real. She has no other friends. <laughs> there is not much difference between going through it with the cameras on you and watching it on TV. Hi, I'm Ivan Katz, producer of Real Reality. I got the idea for this documentary when I saw that an audition was being held locally for a popular reality TV show. I decided to speak to the real people who are trying out for the show to find out why they would want to be on a reality TV show. I also wanted to find out the real reasons why real people watch these shows and what they really think about them. I also got the opportunity to join a reality TV show star as he watched his television debut with his friends and family. So join me as we explore real people and their real views on real reality. Real people, real action. Unpredictability. Yeah. You never know what's going to happen. They can live next door to us. I think it's extremely exciting, extremely dramatic. It's just fun. It's on all the time. It's ridiculous. Because it's my escape from reality. No, I don't like to watch them. I want to know what happened to the good old sitcom. It's too hard to make a sitcom. They had to go to reality TV. It's a lot easier. I think initially it was something different than your normal sitcoms. I find that when I watch it, you just feel tense and emotional when you watch it. When you watch regular comedies or sitcoms, you just it's relaxing. It's like real what real TV used to be. I love working out and watching it and... I just, I follow all the shows. People love to watch other people. They have to see what problems they have, you know, because we all have our own problems. So they want to make sure that other people have the same problems, if not worse. So you buy into their stories, you buy into what they've gone through in their lives, and you're kind of rooting for them. You want them to find love. Love in six weeks with 25 other girls, you know, joining a, joining a you know, STD-free harem, you know, that's not serious. It, that's not reality. I'd say pure entertainment. There's just way too much of it, I think. You know, they make out with each other and stuff. If someone's cheating on someone else, you're like, oh my god, you get into their lives. I can't believe they pass it off as romantic. I don't know that it's unfair to these people. They do sign up to do it, but the portrayal of them is ridiculous. I think because you can see yourself in a lot of different situations, you can actually put yourself in those shoes, and then you see how other people react to that. It's, it's interesting. A lot of it sort of stems from CNN. These CNN junkies that just love to sit there and watch CNN. It's the same type of audience that's going to sit there and watch a reality show. Because Why? CNN, because CNN is, in a way, it's reality TV. You watch for two weeks and you feel like you know them. They're your best friends. She has no other friends. <laughs> I think it's kind of similar to, to sports. It's drama, it's the unknown as opposed to a scripted uh, TV show. I watch it for fun. Um, actually, a bunch of us girls all get together once a week. Um, we all do dinner at somebody's house and all watch it together, and it's just a good time. A little bit of girl bonding. It's obnoxious, I think. You know, we talk about the girls and what they look like and what their hair was like and their nasty attitudes and then the girls that we like. My friends and I all get together and watch the shows and we just love talking about everyone. For instance, on Joe Millionaire we were saying how it's the B list of women whereas The Bachelor is the A list. Uh, like, oh my god, did you see her? She's such a bitch. She's so annoying. I didn't give a man. And then it's so annoying watching it with my guy friends because I think the only reason why they watch the shows is to check out how hot the women are and they just comment the whole time on the women. Probably pretty much the same thing you guys are talking about. Um, we're talking about the girls picking our favorites. Um, 
saying who we think is, has actual feelings and who's just kind of doing it for TV, which ones are a little bit crazy. And invariably we always fall in love with like the sweetheart girl, the girl who's sweet and nice and um, hate the one who's like really hot and just nasty. We, we're pretty catty actually. <laughs> We talk about what people are wearing and why they're saying what they're saying and that they're all being fake and that none of it's true. And then we talk about the guys and which one's cute and which one's not so cute. We just sit back and have a good time, have a good girl bonding time. It's interesting too because some people will really, really like a certain person and other people will hate them and it's fun to kind of trash them and talk about them. It makes for interesting work gossip. We're always emailing back yeah. and forth, ba basically the same stuff. I mean. Just uh, talking about the guys and whether they're a bunch of idiots or uh, whether they whether they're worthwhile, and also with the girls as well. Usually, most of them are a bunch of idiots, and we always always uh, can't believe where they find these people. Looking for your number, your your match on live television in front of millions of people, and the odds of that actually meeting that one person on that show. I mean, that's a pretty good lottery pick. These people take themselves way too seriously, I would say, and uh, they're overdramatic, and I think the effect of being on camera uh, really kind of brings that out. And, of course, it's all with the editing and everything. You don't get an honest portrayal of these things. They say they're from California, but I think originally they're all from uh, somewhere in the Midwest. They've got to be that stupid. I think that... Um that there is a lot of emotion that's true behind there, but that, that the producers and such can kind of change it around and make it look any way that they want to. Well, it's real people on this show, so that's reality. And obviously they put them in situations that are not necessarily realistic, so that by itself makes it not reality. Oh no, they have to live in Las Vegas and drink all the time. Oh, what a rough life that is. It's not the real world because unless there's some place that I don't know about where you can actually get 20 bachelorettes to live in a house and, you know, you can get them, you know, that's not real. There's times when we'll look at each other during the night when we're watching it and we're like, ah, oh, that was so planned. When you don't have to worry about all these other things, you're able to get really dramatic about things that aren't important at all. I mean, if these people were living in like a crappy apartment and had to worry about money and everything, I don't think they'd be upset about who's sleeping with who and who likes who, that sort of thing. They sort of create the show that they want to create. I wonder if it's similar to the game shows, the big scandal in the 60s when everything was fixed. I kind of, it's, some of it, I think, is somewhat fixed. I think things tend to be scripted. I believe more or less they're unscripted, but always there's, you know, even though they say otherwise, you always feel that they know that the camera is there. So there must be some sort of vice. This isn't really how they would actually act in a situation as if there was no camera on them. The degree of reality is that they're not actors, you know, as far as we know. <laughs> so that's, that's real, that they're actually real people. Now, and they're probably, you know, showing their actual emotions, you know, but they're put in a situation which isn't necessarily real. I think that they carefully pick what they choose to show the public. They show, always have the bitch. Right. And they'll show every mean thing that she's ever said on the show. And you know that there's got to be another side of her that, you know, not everyone's nasty all the time. But they do always have the drama queens on The Bachelor. They have the crybabies. I, I think they are, they are looking for people that do, that do have cause drama and get a little psycho on the show. Right. A lot of times you, you see people and, and they come afterwards on other shows and they say, hey, I'm not like that at all. They just pick and choose different parts of it. Sometimes they even wonder if they, they lead them in the direction as to which person to pick in the end. I like them. Obsessed. I watch quite a bit of them right now. At least two VCRs taping several different shows. Wouldn't you agree? Sometimes, uh... Two plus uh, any family member who's willing. We're even thinking about getting TiVo so that we can not miss any of the shows. I think it's great that we all have VCRs or TiVos to tape the reality shows because then none of us would have a life. I always have to tape all the shows if I want to watch them. Okay, so I first started watching reality TV show when Temptation Island came out. And... When I saw the commercials, I was devastated, I was horrified, but I was also sickeningly drawn to it. And we started having some friends over, and we would watch it with our friends, and it became addicting. Um, I, you know, I think it's probably just that time and that generation 
um, people just interested in, in what other people are doing and, and maybe not necessarily satisfied with their lives. A lot of people are working probably more and and uh, want to see what other people are doing, kind of almost voyeuristic, uh, just watching other people's life, living vicariously through others. When Real World first came on, I just actually moved out with some buddies into a house and remember watching it and just thinking about, you know, just the correlation between actually being out on my own for the first time and this show being on and about being in the real world and just dealing with other people on a daily basis. Sort of like an interactive thing, you know, we'd scream out, oh, I hate her and he's so cute and all this crazy stuff and it just became really fun. Um, but it was also just, it left a dirty taste in your mouth because it was just so bad. Um, so then after that we just kind of became addicted and now we wait for the next one to start up again and we count the days until it does and we just, we love it. It's really fun. But I think it's pure entertain entertainment, but it's also trash at the same time. The Bachelor, I don't get it. <laughs> and I, the Bachelor to me, you know, for especially for women, for women, I, if I was watching that show and I was a woman, to me it would be the most degrading thing that I ever saw. That you're going to actually get 20 women that are basically going to live in this house which basically could almost be like a brothel house, you know, and for one guy. And that they're going to be fighting over this guy and falling in love with him, you know, within, you know, two weeks. Because, I mean, people have seen it on the show. Um, to me, it's extraordinarily stupid. You know, these individuals are usually around their mid-20s. They've never had money, or maybe some have, but most of them haven't. They don't have the money yet, and they don't know what they're going to get. They're going to pretty much act the way they've acted their whole life. Um, you know, minus the fact that there's a TV on them and anyone feels somewhat uncomfortable with it, you know, with a camera on them. But as far as the money, I don't think that's really a factor. Um, it's only, in, you know, after the fact uh, issue or uh, thing they deal with. But for the most part, I think uh, they just come as they are. Temptation Island is another great show, and I think it's a great way for people to go on and see if their relationships are really working out and if they are with the right person. Or maybe the right person is right there that they didn't even know existed. The Bachelorette. Let's be honest. The men that are watching this, that go on this show, you don't see them crying when she decides that he's not the one. It's basically just a, a macho fest of, you know, who's going who's gonna to get that girl in the end. You know, you may have two or three of those guys that are the real sensitive guy and that are really interested, but the other 17, they're out, you know, they're looking for something else. I've actually been watching them for a much longer time. I started watching uh, The Real World, which is on MTV. Uh, it's been 10 seasons now, so I, I, I've been watching it for a long time and I've been rel religious about it. Uh, and only late, lately has it become a little bit more mainstream. Uh, but, you know, it's got, gotten a little trashier, uh, like Alicia said, but you know, it's still enjoyable. It's not my life. It's theirs, and I get to watch it through the uh, the the TV screen. So, that's why I enjoy it. Cause it's interesting, and there's a lot of sex. And I love sex. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun to watch. And I don't know. They they, they spice it up. Complaining. It's a great show. It's been on forever, and it was the first one that started, and then Survivor went after it. But the Real World on MTV has been on for like 20 years. No. It's, it's not reality. I, I think that basically any of these shows that are trying to push reality to a certain point, I mean, to a, to a degree, I, would, I think if you look at shows like The Real World and Road Rules, which started, you know, probably, what, eight years prior to this huge push of reality television, at least in those shows, even though they did hype it, you know, tried to put alcohol into the mix and tried to put some controversy into it, it was more of a situation of people were dealing with each other just for the experience. It wasn't them dealing with each other and the last person left in the real world house got a million bucks. It was just them getting to live in a special town, you know, Chicago, New York, and live there for a while, experience other people. And that was interesting. That was, you know, really seeing how people mix together without these extras involved. So, of course, when you have something like, you know, Survivor, everybody's going for a million dollars. Why not just have a Survivor show and just see how people dealt with each other? That, you know, that would be fascinating, but people aren't necessarily going to watch. I first started watching reality shows when one of my friends, a neighbor of mine, called me over during a snow day, and all we did all day long, and it probably drove her fiancé crazy, was we watched the Learning Channel. Well, it's TLC now, but back then it was the Learning Channel. We watched a dating story and a wedding story, and after that I was hooked. 
and I just had to watch every show that was on TV. Younger years are always better. Why? Because I think that you're allowed to be a little more dramatic and exciting and innovative when you're younger. When you get older, you get put in this little mold. You're supposed to be more professional and you don't get to have as much fun. I was following The Bachelor with one of my friend's mothers, and she's the one that's gossiping about the show more than any of, all, any of my friends. Fear factor, don't understand it, don't know where the fear is. I mean, you have fears that, you know, are natural, fear of heights, um, you know, fear of dying in a fiery burning car or something like that. But then the fear of eating some weird worm, I don't think that's really a normal fear because the chance of it actually happen isn't, isn't there. If they were calling it gross factor, then, you know, that may be appropriate. But fear factor, no, it, you know, stupidity factor is more a better name for it. The Osbournes is another, but that's funny. The, the Osbournes, Osbournes, the Osbournes is funny. Why is that funny? It's because Ozzy's funny. You just see the way people live, and it's supposed to be funny. Like they're just living their lives there. It's normal. like it's it's ridi it's ridiculous to say, and it's ridiculous to watch, probably. But uh, I think it's pretty funny. But every family's like that. If you filmed any family, it'd be it'd be funny to make anything funny. Married by America is just the most ridiculous one of all of them, where America chooses who should marry the guy, and there's like three girl can three girl finalists. They ask her questions and stuff, and they go into her background, like, have you ever cheated on a guy? And if she has, she's out. It's ridiculous. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 no, Joe Molina was cool. Why? Oh, shock value. Shock value? Yeah. I mean, just to see her face when he says, you know, you know, I'm, I'm a forklift operator. Joe Millionaire. Actually, kind of got into it a little bit. Um, it was a little bit interesting, um, just on the side of if you're just watching something incredibly stupid, but you can't turn away because you're like, okay, what's the next stupid thing that's going to happen? A lot of my girlfriends and I disagree with Joe Millionaire. Um, some of them thought he was like the Neanderthal man, and other girls thought he was super hot. And I think I was somewhere in between. The two that he ended up with were bad choices to begin with. So, I mean. Oh. Strong words. Just because they aren't you, Jess, doesn't mean they're bad choices. <laughs> you know, he would say things like, they'd be in Paris, or I don't know what, and he's supposed to be this rich guy that, like, really educated and that's traveled so much, but yet he didn't know anything about the country, and the girls would ask him things, and he would make up things, and they were so clearly wrong. The whole audience would be like, oh my god, how are these girls so dumb, you know? He's obviously the worst, world's worst construction worker, you know. You know, construction workers don't make 19000 a year. You got a union, you know, you, you're doing fine for yourself. Like, Joe Millionaire, we heard that he was spotted at a bar and wasn't looking to be on a show and truly wasn't making very much money and they just liked his look, they liked his appearance, and they picked him. One person I interviewed spoke to and met the real Joe Millionaire. I went to this bar, Hotel Monaco, in D.C. And I just walked in and... The buzz was that that was him. Everybody was just kind of whispering and pointing, and so. But no one was going up to him. No, he Why was not? just sort of standing in the, um, among a bunch of people, just kind of trying not to make eye contact with anybody. So I just got all excited, and I and I my 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 date was like, "Is that Joe Millionaire?" And I said, "Oh my God, it is!" And then I was like, "No." not, but he had this, such a distinctive face and eyes, even though his body looked different than on the show, I thought. It just had to be him. So I was like, oh my God, you're Joe Millionaire, and I went up and I touched him. And so, you know, I, I believe that he didn't make a lot of money, but I don't think that he really cared so much about that. I think he was looking for love, as we all are. And he just, he didn't even respond at all. He was really, he just ignored me, and I was like mortified. He just looked down into his drink and just like, Got, he was just really cold expression. He just didn't even want to talk to anybody. So then I, just, I was like, I felt really bad. But I knew it was him at that moment because he wouldn't have acted that way otherwise. It was a little bit too much. It wasn't even reality. It was like they were living in a super fake world because they were all living lives. Yeah, but I almost had to. I mean, like, with that one, is like you had to watch it because it's like a train wreck. Like, you can't just, like, you like walk the lies. by and, and look. Yeah. You buy into the lies. I don't buy into it, but you can't turn your head. It's like it's just something about it. you got to have to watch it. Then we just left. Um, because we just left him alone because he didn't want to talk to anybody. So then um, he went out, he, he left the crowd and went out onto this terrace at the bar, away from the crowd. 
that's good TV, I guess. Um, that's uh, that's the, the cliffhanger. I mean, they they did. A we we were angry as as all hell when they didn't uh, they didn't show us the answer on that one. But but who's angry enough to stop watching? That's, the that's and that was the whole thing. There was well, like uh, we were reading. Uh, I was reading lots of like posts online about like people were really angry and they're like, we're gonna boycott it. We're gonna boycott it. Nobody boycotted it. Oh, like Joe Millionaire. Oh, that was horrible. That was a big letdown. But that's Fox. I said, you know, I feel bad. I said, he's a person. He wants to be treated like a person. And I, the way I just treated him is like he's a star. And he obviously doesn't want to be treated that way. And nobody, everyone was afraid to talk to him. And I just was so determined to even know for sure if it was him. So I decided just to leave the crowd and go out on the terrace and approach him. So I just went up to him and I just said, um, hi. I said, are you two a millionaire? And he just said, yeah, I am. He was like a likable person in that he wasn't the brainiest guy in the world, but he was really nice. Um, yeah, there was, I guess, that, that appeal to it, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> the whole premise of the show is rotten. Like a relationship based off of a lie. I mean, I hated that almost as much as I hated that Temptation Island show. And then I said, oh, I just wanted to say hi. I said, I'm sorry about before, I said, but I just, you know, wanted to say hi. I watched the show, and he's like, oh, hi, what's your name? And I said, my name's Lynn. He's like, nice to meet you, and he shook my hand. And he was talking with an older couple, so sort of just joined in on their conversation. Because he was cute also, you know, they were charmed by his looks and his cash. Well, he just started talking about how he felt about his fame. That's the first thing he started saying, how... I guess the other, the older couple had sort of been prompting in this direction about the show and asking him lots of questions, how he felt about things, and he just said, well, yeah, I'm having a really hard time dealing with the fame, and I don't know, something to this effect, like, I don't know if I can deal with it, it's it's really overwhelming and something like maybe he would go back to construction because he didn't know if he could handle all this fame. He didn't have any privacy anymore. And he, he, he just, everywhere he went, it's just, um, you know, a big deal. Like, he said, one, he's at dinner and people want to, once one person wants to take a picture, then he has to take a picture with everybody. So he just says no and doesn't do it at all. Well, Joe Millionaire, I think he should have picked the other woman, not Dora, because he picked Dora and the one thing that's happening with all these reality shows is that the couples don't seem to be working out. And then he said, you know, I used to, I used to really, um, really think that stars or people were snobby when they didn't want to give their autographs that they were famous, he said, but now I get it, I understand it. He's like, because now I, I feel the same way. He's like, I don't want, you know, to be bothered. I want my privacy and, and I just don't have it. He said, I was at the airport and these girls were following me for like a half an hour and I was on my phone and you know, he's like, I just couldn't get away from them. They wouldn't leave me alone. He just kept talking and telling us how he felt about his fame. And he made a comment that it was, I said, well, why don't you, um, you know, disguise yourself, wear sunglasses or something. He's like, oh, I've tried that. And everybody still recognizes me. He's like, I, you know, I've tried everything except, like, going, like, shaving off my hair so I'm bald. He's like, I'm about to try that. So I kept hoping that there would be some good outcome where, like, there would be some honesty. He's like, um, I just get really tired of talking about the show from morning till night, and, and people always ask me stuff. But he, he was talking about it so much, so I, I didn't mean to be rude, but I just said, well, you don't, he's like, it's really gets really boring talking about it. And I said, well, you don't seem bored talking about it. And the money really isn't that big of an incentive. I think the bigger picture there is that they get to be on TV. They get to be famous. They get to be somebody. And he's like, well, yeah, you try talking about it all day from the time you wake up till the time you go to sleep. <laughs> so he just seemed kind of bitter and angry about the whole fame thing. And people were, I think, having a hard time understanding that when I told them the story later. They just said, oh, like, well, then why, why did he want to be on that show? And what, you know, the only thing I asked him was, um, did, he, did he keep in contact with any of the people from the show? Did he make any friends? And he said, no, not really. Unfortunately not, and I'm thinking, huh, I wonder why. <laughs> you know, it was a good show, but the guy was such an idiot, he was such a moron, and these girls that were with him just totally didn't, like, see it. It was so dumb, like, how stupid do you have to be? He said that they, they wanted to tell him exactly what to say. It was very scripted, and they wanted to tell him how to act and which girls to be spending more time with. And he said, no, I just didn't want to do that. He said, um, I just refused to do that. He said, I'm not being paid as an actor. And, it just, you know, he said, so he had some disagreements with the producers about that kind of stuff. And he said it was insulting because he, 
you know, grew up doing construction, and they knew that, he said, and they they met, you know, they they saw the place where he grew up, and he was insulted because he said, oh, they thought I would have grown up in a, in a trailer or something. You know, and he grew up in a normal house in Virginia. I just have no privacy. That um, It's not like I'm, like, Tom Cruise and Rita Wilson where I can just buy an island and get away from it all. He's like, I don't have that much money. The truth is that I, I did think he seemed just like a down-to-earth guy, like a regular guy who is just kind of bitter that he has so much fame. But I think he secretly must enjoy it. I, I, he's got to. As real reality turns full circle, we join a real reality TV show star watching his television debut with his friends and family. Okay, guys, quiet. Tonight was unbelievable, watching the premiere episode with my family, my girlfriend, who's by my side through everything, and friends and family from all over the place, all there, all in one room watching on a big screen this, this event. There was a lot of different emotions. I was excited for him. I was worried. Um, I, it was like a roller coaster. I really went from, wow, this is amazing. This is going to change our life, and we're going to be on TV, and how cool. And then it went back to, whoa, this is really weird, and it's reality TV, and what if he's made out really badly, and how am I going to react, and what if they create situations that I, you know, I'm not comfortable with. And so I really had all the emotions, but I, it ended up just through talking to Sam and just communicating where he wants to go with it and what his intentions were. It helped me you know, realize that this was going to be a fun experience. The exciting part of it, yeah, it's neat to see the TV show. I was, I was most excited. I wanted to see how the show was put together, the product. I knew how the show ended. I wanted to see how the show was put together. But the true joy is that this reality TV show is an event. It's a life event. And the experience is in the sharing it with your family and your friends and the people you love. When Sam was uh, in the seventh grade, he decided that the school should have a dance off campus because they always had their dances at Landon in the, uh, in the gym. So he concocted an idea to sell roses. And he got all these kids together, he bought them wholesale, and he parceled them out, and he sold roses, and he made enough money to have this fantastic party. He's no apprentice, you know? Sam could be there sitting on the other side of the table, because you know, Sam has experienced a lot of that. Sam has put his ass on the line many a time within business. I've been there. I've seen it. And, I mean, I respect everything that Donald Trump's done. The guy's a multi-billionaire. He's put his ass on the line. But Sam epitomizes what The Apprentice is all about. Working for Trump is a, more than a big deal. It's a huge deal. Oh. <laughs> and uh, then when uh, Mother's Day came around, he saw how well he had done previously, so he sold the roses himself. And he's just always been in the entrepreneurial vein and uh, succeeds. From 7 a.m. until 7.30 at night, selling lemonade. And we made a measly, we didn't double them, we, 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 we didn't even double them, I don't know, maybe 4 dollars or whatever. And I tried to call, I wanted, one of the things, I, I was like, Bill, go call Scores, the strip club, let's get some strippers out here, carrying like trays. I said, we'll have a circus and... Uh, I wanted to go to NYU and hire cute. I mean, I, not that I'm trying to, but I knew the women were doing that. To put a group together, 16 superb uh, individuals, and have them out there selling lemonade as a first task is a bunch of crap. If I was an odds maker in Vegas, I wouldn't have given the guy's team a 10 billion to 1 chance to win. It would have taken a miracle. And Sam had the right idea. Sex sells. He had that girl out there he was trying to sell. And you know what? It wasn't about lemonade. It's about, you're on a reality show. Go for it. You know what? Sell the lemonade for $1,000. Hire strippers. Get women doing it. Create a circus. Create an event. Because that's what life's all about. Do it big. You only get one chance at it. So just go out and do it. Honor your family. Honor your friends. Give people who exceed their expectations and just every day. Just go out and do it. They refer to me crazy talk. That's crazy talk. I don't know if they'll be in the show, but they'll say, Sam, that's crazy talk. That's crazy talk. And, uh... I'll tell you, um, I did think out of the box, and the contestants, unfortunately, thought I was thinking out of the building, out of, out, 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 out of, the, out of the block, 
They thought I was out of the street corner. They thought I was out of the city. They thought I thought out of the earth. They thought I was completely out of my mind. One of the contestants had to translate what I said for the other contestants. They didn't even understand what I said. I didn't think he came off as being crazy, as some of the newspaper articles, uh, you know, thought he was a jerk. I thought he was uh, very thoughtful and uh, straightforward and creative. And uh, the idea of the thousand dollar check, I thought he should have gotten a check from anybody for a thousand dollars and whether it was any good or not was beside the point. But they would have won the game if he had come up with a thousand dollar check. The only thing was that girl, at the that woman at the beginning, was standing like right here. And I, I've never been around a woman that tall. <laughs> She's got this big fake chest. And I'm like this. I just remember, because we're waiting there. They had us waiting there for about a, a good hour, actually. Because they want to, you know. And I'm like this, and I just go like this. <laughs> and it really, and she was that tall. I mean, her legs came up to about here on me. Women are vicious. But that's too general of a thing to say. Women are vicious to one another. Women are vicious, but the remarkable thing about women is they are vicious to each other, and the next day it's all kissy and sucky. They forget about it. They're vicious, they claw and scratch and nail and bite, and the next day it's ah, and then they're vicious to each other. And boy, they can be hard. Before he left, and when our relationship was a little rocky, um, it worried me. Um, not because I don't trust him, it was just because of the state of our relationship and the thoughts and the conversations that were going through our mind. And then um, once he started calling me, there was a change in the phone calls that we had while he was away that he had his moment of clarity, we'll call it, where he realized, you know, pretty face doesn't always mean a wonderful, great person that you want to spend time with. Um, so it actually ended up to help me out <laughs> in the long run because he realized that these supermodel, gorgeous women aren't necessarily wonderful women. And so even though it was a little weird and he's friends with them now and they call him now and it's somebody I don't know and I haven't interacted with, I'm, I'm okay with it. I'm but men are sure. different. And, and, that's the, and that's the difference between women and men. Uh, I learned through the show that, that beauty, physical beauty, is a myth. Physical beauty is a myth. It's only skin deep. I think beautiful women, just like that genius guy with the MBA and MD, actually at a disadvantage in our society. When you have a bell curve, and you have the geniuses and the most beautiful people at one end, at the extremes of the bell curve, people with the greatest physical attributes and the greatest mental attributes. You know what? It's very tough. It's very tough being those people. It's very tough to live because the geniuses are very unhappy on the inside because they see things completely differently and they're dissatisfied because they can't tolerate things. Things have to be precisely that way. And it's hard to be a genius, not speaking as a genius, but people with those high IQs, they're seeing things differently. That's tough life he leads. It's hard for him to function in society. He's successful, they can be successful, but it's a struggle. To think that there's 300 minutes of footage for one minute of, uh, of what is used in the show, it's mind-blowing. I mean, they're telling a story. They could tell 10 different stories during that show. They could tell 10 different stories. There's, there, there's at least 10 different ways they could, they could probably shoot those shows. I mean, if they wanted to make me out to look brilliant, they could in all those three shows. But that would be interesting. You think people want to watch me be brilliant? I'm probably boring brilliant. And then you have beautiful women with the big breasts and the long legs. And they can be geniuses. And they're not geniuses, but they can be very smart. But those beautiful women are a disadvantage because you know what? The business world and our society is staring at the chest and is staring at the legs and never hears one word they say. And you know what? It dumbs you down after a while. It makes you a little foolish. It makes you a little stupid. It dumbs you down. It's better to be in the middle of that bell curve. Looks bad. The territory. You've got my name tears. You look brilliant. I get dry, scratchy, irritated. Yeah, you are. Fine bean tears. And I look like a jerk. You got the girl to run. No, you were right. Like your you own look brilliant. Natural tears. I thought Sam had a lot of sting power because he was an interesting character. He was flopping around on the floor, being a complete goofball. Yeah. Everyone else wasn't doing that. And I thought that he would kick up the ratings because people wanted to watch and see what he was just what he was going to do. I responded to every single email from anybody, any stranger. Um, how many? How many a day is that? About 120. I got an email today from Jeff Giles, who I went to school with until the first grade. Jeff Giles, I got to read this to you, real quick. The email to me. 
Sam, so I was checking out the Apprentice website and came across a name that had been buried in my brain since 1984, 20 years ago, the year I was in second grade at primary day school. My family moved from Potomac to St. Louis, Missouri just before the end of that school year. Funny how some memories stay with you. When I showed you the house we were moving into, you told me, that's a mini mansion. I know because I live in one and that house is bigger. Kids say the darndest things. I remember you well, and kids do say the darndest things, and as you will see tonight, so do adults. Hi, Sam. I enjoyed watching on The Apprentice. I thought you were brilliant, but misunderstood. I thought your idea of selling the glass of lemonade for $1,000 was a good one. I hated how your male teammates made you a scapegoat and gave you small tasks. It seemed like a silly waste to me. I thought you seemed really sweet and sincere. I felt drawn to you for some reason. Your passion and intensity I found sort of mesmerizing. Honestly, I was disappointed to hear you had gotten engaged. I am also 27 and successful in business. I was going to write to you, introduce myself, and send some pictures, but that would probably be inappropriate and disrespectful given recent events in your life. <laughs> dot, 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 smiley face. I admire how you are so close to your family and parents. Best of luck in your business endeavors. I wish circumstances could have been different and we could have met. Sam, this is Tavares Peel, the guy he get, who you gave 50 bucks to skip the line at the Trump auditions. Just wishing you luck. I know the show is recorded. Let me know how, let me know how it was. The guy who I gave the money to. Now that is good TV. Sam, I was glued. In an attempt to be unbiased, I think your statement about an MD MBA and the true nature of an entrepreneur came off very well. A soothing statement for this med school dropout. And your sex sells lemonade in negotiation with the Russians was awesome. Mark and I were sitting here thinking you had the hot hand and then everything went downhill. When you stood up at the board meeting, I was actually biting the collar of my shirt. Anyway, I was so, so hooked and I think you actually won a lot of people over with the, that close call. You came across as in your face but likable. I know the filming is long over at this point, but good luck next Wednesday. Close one, you demand, saw you on The Apprentice, Daniel Bonner told me you were on the show. Very cool. Had you gotten a thousand dollars for a couple of lemonade, you would have been my hero for life. Kudos. Sam, after watching the series premiere of The Apprentice, I love your style. I know I must wait till the end to see how you fare. But regardless of the outcome, you have my support and admiration. Who are these people? That's you, isn't it? I know you can't say it, but I really hope you won. Anyway, I know that I made the right choice for my first crush. Oh, jeez. I was at uh, breakfast the day after the first show, and she came up to me, patted me on the back, and said, Sammy, we're rooting for you. I, I like, almost like she felt sorry for me. And I was very excited because I think it was the first time that a woman's come up to me in a public place that, you know, I wasn't chasing around a room. Um, I had an autograph. Uh, people asked me for autographs. It's ridiculous. I'm getting a kick out of it. The person who first auditioned me in the open call, first person who spotted me, just called to congratulate me. They're having a premiere party out in L.A. And she just called. She's with the There's casting director. Like all the producers, not, not Mark Burnett, but everybody else. I feel like I'm a prostitute for NBC. Uh, look, I assume this is all going to end in about 70, you know, the end of this week, and there'll be nothing else. That's my assumption. That's my expectation. So after Thursday, when I do my little silly thing for extra, that'll be it. It'd be great if extra picked me up and did something each week, but who knows if they will. As much as you're on the phone talking to yeah. this person, talking to that person, talking about stuff. I think there will be, first of all, press, to me, is a fleeting thing. Getting articles written about you, things like that. Yeah, something may happen locally, but I don't think there's going to be like a national stage for me. It's not so much that I don't think something's going to happen. I have no expectations of anything happening. The people on the show can't really do press yet. So they're kind of living vicariously through my experience, and then I'll have to live vicariously through their experience, because they're still on the show. And of course I would have liked some more time. I mean, to think that if I had won that third episode, but then who knows, I would have made an ass out of myself in, other, in some other regard. A third episode? I thought I was set up to fail. It wasn't my day to lead. It was a no-win situation. It was time for me to go. Considering that I felt like I feel like right now, during the third episode, I had nothing left in the tank. I mean, you think you were, and you think you were set up. Look, I was a little delusional. I hadn't had any sleep. My team was a bunch of narrow-minded jackasses, and uh, you put that all together, and it's a disaster. <laughs> It was a dream of a lifetime. Once, one, just, just a great experience to sit there. Rod Stewart on my left, David Spade on my right, and uh, Jay Leno there. I mean, it was just, just unbelievable, unbelievable. It's, it's, it's those defining moments in your life that make it all, make it all worthwhile. What's the standout? I think it was uh, Rod Stewart grabbing my leg, squeezing it. I uh, wasn't expecting that, but uh, I'll tell you, the standout was having uh, my sister here. 
Japan and you here, and uh, that's really what it's all about. It's having the family here to celebrate it with, with me. And I sat down, I shook David's face, and I sat down, and it was just like, Jalen was like right there in your face. He's right there. And he looks almost like a cartoon character. And, um,. It did the interview. It was just, it was very smooth. I remember when Rod Stork got up and we all went up to watch him on the stage, I'm thinking to myself, here's one of like the great musicians of, 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 of my generation and my parents' generation, I mean, for many generations. Here he is singing on The Tonight Show and I'm standing here watching him as another guest, his equal on the show, and I just stopped for a second. I kind of semi-closed my eyes and I was like, just to take it all in. I thought about the family and about Lori and I was like, it's just unbelievable. This is Sam's freezer. Look at that. Grand ice cream. And look, it's empty. <laughs> well, half. And of course he has syrup here. So is this to say he's not at home much lately? <laughs> That's what it says. <laughs> Definitely. So you're back home now. What do you think? I feel better now. I feel better. I feel like I did after the first episode. I feel relieved. But going through the first episode was kind of like going through the actual experience. I actually felt like it was the same, like the same kind of experience, like almost like going through it for the first time. The the the, the whole intensity of it, because I I I do things with such intensity and such passion that I, I get carried away in the moment, and it was so intense. It was terrifying. I mean, am I going to look like a schmuck? Am I going to look like a hero? Am I going to look like I got my head so firmly wedged between Donald Trump's finely groomed buttocks? You know, what is it going to look like? I don't know. I wanted to see. I mean, I'm bowing, I'm bending, I'm crawling, I'm shuffing, I'm this, I'm that, I'm complaining, I'm praising, I'm this, I'm driving everybody completely nuts, and I clawed my way out of it. When I saw Trump today, act, just like, it all came together right there. I want access to Trump. I want to get to know that guy, but I don't want it to be in the boardroom. Back of the limousine, at a bar, with his girlfriend. I don't care where it is, not in the boardroom. You know, honestly, there is not much difference between going through it with the cameras on you and watching it on TV. It brings back the emotion, it brings back the passion to watch it on TV. I felt like I was back in that boardroom. I felt like it. the only difference is I knew the outcome, but maybe I knew the outcome during it too, because I did a lot of research on Donald Trump. I, 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 I felt pretty confident he wasn't going to go with the group think. Sam has always been creative and uh, thinking out of the box, and that's what he was doing tonight. I thought these other people were pretty straightforward and uh, not very creative, but uh, that's the way he's always been. I don't care what people say about me. They can say I'm a maniac and I'm this and I'm that. But the worst thing and the most lasting impression is if the overall show is unsuccessful. I want the show to be successful. I want Mark Burnett to be successful with it, Donald Trump, the 16 contestants. I want me to be successful. I want everybody to get something out of it. Why, why not? This isn't a game. This is a 13-week job interview. You know, editing is a very hard thing to do. And yes, they left out some things that I thought were absolutely brilliant. Now, like, like, um, well, let me first say, if I really wanted to be arrogant, I could say they left the things out because some of my ideas and some of the things I said were so far and beyond what they could use, it would have given away the show. I Like, if I gave too much the strippers, I mean, things that I very early tried to get at, if they put that out there, it kind of maybe would have messed with the show. But things like, there were moments in the boardroom that were just classic but they didn't use him. I mean, the true way I put it when I was in the boardroom, when I got up, I stood up, I said, Mr. Trump, I am getting fed up here. I said, I am not a cheater. And I went like this. I said, I am not a cheater. Just like Fred and Mary Trump raised you to be a killer, Tracy and David Solidy raised me to be a killer. And when I'm the president of one of your companies, I will run it with honesty, integrity, and loyalty. And then he said, sit down. And I what else was left out? I mean, there's little things. The strippers. I had Bill call Scores Strip Club in New York trying to get his strippers. I wanted to go to NYU around that area and get, and get their students, the female students, pay them a buck and, and have them, you know, do what the women were doing. A buck for a sock, which is essentially what it was. Sex sells. And that doesn't mean that women, it doesn't demean women. 
But when you're out selling lemonade, it's about presentation. And I would, and even women would, because I think women, by the way, are just as attracted and drawn to women as men. Women, too, would want to buy lemonade from an attractive woman. Yeah, not just men. Women, too, are drawn to women. Who wants to buy lemonade from some stuffy dud with a silly accent and, and a three-piece suit with his collar too tight because he doesn't know how to tie his tie? First of all, what I want to do, and they didn't put this in the show, I want to dress up Tr Kwame, Troy, and Nick like uh, Chippendales. I wanted them to take their shirts off and just wear their ties. You didn't see that in there. You didn't see that. And they didn't want to do that. That would have been good television. I wanted to give, they were giving kisses with the lemonade. I wanted us to give back massages with the lemonade. He knew that he was going to be on this thing called The Apprentice. Um, I was asking him detail after detail, go in to tell me what's going on. Well, tell me about the show. I can't, John. I can't tell you about the show. I really don't know what's going on. I just know I've got this great experience. I'm going to be on TV, and I'm going to be one of 16 contestants out of a couple hundred thousand, and it's a chance of a lifetime. If he was being taped while he was talking to you, obviously, he couldn't. <laughs> You couldn't really say anything about right. the show, could you? Did that drive you crazy? It did, because it was like, well, where do I go with the conversation? You know, there's so much I could tell him about what was going on with my day. And he would call me at really weird hours, too, because things that were going on during the day. So he'd end up calling me at 1 o'clock in the morning or 5 o'clock in the morning and wake me up. And he seemed out of it, and I was out of it. And so there were quick conversations that um, just didn't really have a lot of substance. It was just kind of to check in and hear, you know, hear their vo his voice. He goes, oh, like that. And he goes, do that again, do that again. And he got in so much trouble, the camera guy. No, they don't, everything is one take. That's it. The best word, really, to, to describe Sam, I mean, I would say uh, passion. He's passionate, and that's, and, and experience is everything to Sam. This show will be forgotten, and there'll be something else. Or life will go on, and will be ordinary, it'll be extraordinary. But what's important from this is the opportunity to share this defining event this experience that we all have and it's special for all of us not just me it's special for the photographer it's special for the people who are there who are listening it's it's everybody gets something out of it and it's not really about me it's about the memory that's created <laughs> you okay? Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> okay that's not too hard to do oh boy he you know, he couldn't say a lot. He was being very selective in what he said, but I could just tell when he came back that he was proud of himself and that he felt like it was a positive experience. And we were just happy to be together um, and be at the same place at the same time. And so just as a relationship standpoint, it was like we were starting again and it was a, a fresh start. And he had this positive outlook on life and really had thought, you know, he figured things out, he made new friends, and, and I um, was just really happy. It was finally, you know, to be with him, and it was really hard, though, because we still couldn't say anything about the show. Um, my family had no idea, and we had to wait until the commercial started. The feedback I've received is very favorable. People think I did a great job. To have business clients email me and say that I'm the only one, I'm heads above the rest, you know, so what? They'll see what they think, you know, next week. You know, the, the, the people are fickle. They'll turn on you in a second. I don't get caught up. I'm not going to get a big head because I know it's over like that. You know how long this big moment will last? Until Tuesday or until next Wednesday at 7.59 p.m. That's how long this moment will last. And then, it's, then it, it starts all over again. It's like Groundhog Day. So I'm not, I, I'm not deluded by it, let me tell you. But it's nice to get the praise. It's nice to be recognized for putting your you you know what on the table in front of Donald John Trump and going right at it head to head and uh, it feels good it feels good to see that you know what I was portrayed as I am Sam I am and they portrayed me as I am as Sam being consistent I feel that I was I was consistent I, I recognize that David there was something odd about the MDA MD MBA the location in the show, I mean, not to be critical, but there were things that just weren't right. In the box thinking. There was a lot of in the box thinking. I don't need to go through the whole, you know, hash it all out again. But it was that, it was, I, I was, I was recognized for my out of the box and for taking a risk. And that's what it's about, you know? It's, it, that's what it's about. I look like a pompous schmuck. I'm on a round bed from 1962 <laughs> that's so with, sad that with mirrors. I mean, Hugh Hefner would bow down to this room. Come on, give me an Austin awesome Powers on this bed. Come on. Hey, baby, you want a shag? <laughs> Look at this bed. <laughs> this 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 uh, skirt. Uh huh. Yeah, this skirt was handmade. Not handmade. It, it was tailored, hand tailored 
It's about seven hundred dollars. And you too could live like this. You too could live like this. On two hundred fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> I asked them why they would want to meet someone on a reality TV show. I auditioned for Married by America. Why? Why not? I thought it'd be a perfect way to meet someone. Can't you meet someone in the real world? I can, but this way I thought it'd be exciting doing it on TV. I love yeah. reality TV, and um, I've always been really impressed with The Bachelor. I think they come up with a pretty high caliber of men. Um, so I figured, why not? Give it a shot. It should be fun. It's pretty, it's pretty damn boring, to be honest with you. It's 40 girls sitting around tables waiting to get called up to uh, go behind this little partition. We were going over there to get our uh, fast food lunch. And uh, as you can see, I'm dressed up to, to the nines. Yeah, trying to look great. And we walk in and all these beautiful women are just like wandering around. We had no idea what was going on. There was a couple cute girls. Um, a couple that kind of wondering why they were there, but <laughs> there was a lot of cute ones. Are there people dead fucking serious about this? Sorry. <laughs> I, mean to swear that. I came this close to auditioning for The Bachelor, but all my friends and family told me I was too old to audition for the show. I'm pretty established, and I really feel that a husband's the only thing that's kind of missing out of my life right now. So, thought to give it a shot. They're dead serious. They're like, I'm here for love. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Just asking you why you'd want to um, find a husband on TV. Asking you a couple questions about yourself, hobbies, um, adjectives to describe yourself, things like that. All the girls bond, they have a good time. You know, it's like going to camp. I've never been to a camp like that. You know, sign me up. I'll go to the, I'll go to the 25 woman, one guy camp. That'd be, that'd be a good time. Fun, um, intelligent girls. Um, certainly, I'm sure looks are a factor in it. Um, spirit, just kind of somebody that's not afraid to get on TV and talk about their feelings, open up and let it, the whole world know what you're thinking. Is that you? We'll see. I guess that's up for the producers to decide. So excited for her. I think it's great. She has met a lot of losers along the line, and we're hoping that this will change her direction a little bit. While shooting at the reality TV show audition, I ran into some real trouble. You guys got to go because this is Boston awesome Common Mall property. And we need to start don't want to be on your camera. I'm just a general manager here. We don't really want you here. They don't want you here. Why don't you just beat it? I'm not it. shooting that. I'm no. not shooting anything to do with this. Sir, do you mind breaking down for it? You can't see them out of the building, sir. How long have you lived in Arlington? Uh, a while. Uh, uh, Some of the people I spoke to were acquainted with real reality TV show stars. I was recently reading an article in the Washington Post, and it was on people that have been on Survivor that live in the D.C. area, like Colleen Haskell. And they were talking about how they're, they're sick of being a celebrity, but they really weren't so sick when they were getting all their endorsements and when they were going on this show. So I think people need to realize that if they're going on the reality show, that they're going to have to get used to being recognized when they're out in public. Survivor, for instance. I had a friend who's on Survivor. She just got voted off, actually. And uh, it, it's, I don't know, like the portrayal of my friend was ridiculous. It's not what she's like at all. Sarah from Joe Millionaire was actually one of my old sorority sisters. Um, and I think they kind of gave her a bad rap. Um, they sort of edited her to be the sort of evil one on the show. Um, so I hope they don't do anything like that to me. But everything I saw about Sarah, I think she's a great girl. Let's say The Bachelor on the show, um, he went to, to business school with 
some of my friends, and what they had said about him was that he was on this show to pursue his acting because he, he wasn't pursuing his MBA to go on to some business degree, he decided to business career, he decided it wasn't for him. So he was actually using the show to to get his acting career started. But don't you think most people do that? Um not necessarily. If you if you watch for love or money, I I think some of the people are actually on it for the love and not the money. Portrayed her like this like crybaby, like she was she got sick while she was there, and they didn't portray that at all. They just made it look like she was, like, whining all the time. Survivor, hey, that's my favorite reality show. I happen to know somebody who was on it this last time, so I had an excuse. I have to watch it. I don't think that's really voyeurism if you know somebody. My favorite reality show? Whew, I don't know. I, I, I guess it would be Survivor, simply because there's a game aspect to it. We are Alpha Phi sisters at George Mason University, and um, she's a great girl. That's the thing. I don't know that everybody gets that. I think people... We like characters. We like to look at it like it's a like it is a movie or a TV show with a story. It's not. Okay, who do you know? Shauna. Shauna. She went to my college, so. All right. How well do you know her? Uh, I know of her. I did. Yeah, I know of her. Her first name is Shauna. Yeah. <laughs> Tommy, did you ever have any personal interaction with this girl? No, but my roommate did. So I feel like I know her how, through how my roommate. roommate <laughs> how did your roommate? My roommate actually did know her. They lived on the same freshman hall. So they, they actually know each other by name and still communicate. So. No, I, I, she went to college uh, at William & Mary where I went. And uh, okay. like that's where she was in a sorority with my girlfriend at the time. So, but yeah, she, uh, she ended up doing things like going on Howard Stern, that sort of thing. Like, and I'm sure she made a pretty penny out of the whole deal. I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't be willing to give up. Uh, I wouldn't be willing to have America know me as something and probably be wrong um, for, the, for money, but that's just me. He did say that what they would do is they would get everyone drunk before, right before filming the show. And then um, the women on the show were able to get whatever they wanted. If they wanted a new outfit, they'd run out and get them the new, the new outfit. She, um... It was actually a very down-to-earth, um, very classy, very confident girl. Um, she was a couple years older than I was, so I didn't know her too well, but everybody that I've ever spoke, known has spoken of her very, very highly. Shauna was on Howard Stern on TV at the time, and we were both appalled and turned it off. Couldn't, we just don't want to see that. I don't know. I think when you do know the truth about it, when you do know like, the reality of these people, it becomes a lot less appealing. Although I did watch Survivor every day, every time until she was off. But you have Aaron from The Bachelor. He's off with some some play Playboy bunny, and and um, poor Helene's in New Jersey. And it just seems like people are going on the shows for the wrong reasons. They're not going on the shows to meet people. They're going on the shows for their 15 minutes. That Temptation Island show, which I think that's probably the worst one of them all. Why? Well, because, because the, the, probably the, the only saving thing that we have as people are, are the relationships that we build, and the, like the idea that you might potentially fall in love, and to, to exploit that on television, to willingly exploit that, and to, to go on a show and, and to, to go on a show and potentially cheat on your significant other just for television, just because there are attractive people around. That, that's so heartless and shallow, it just upsets me. I think that any couple who goes on to a show like Temptation Island has to know that they're getting themselves into trouble. Or, yeah, they have to make a pact to say, listen, we're not going to do it, we're just going to come for the money. I don't know, but, but then you never know when you're put into certain situations. I kind of feel like maybe people might change their mind about what they plan on doing originally. I mean, you're put in a situation where there are temptations, and I think it's hard to resist them sometimes. Whether they were real couples or not, I don't like the message of, uh, it's okay to cheat, it's okay to shop around. But I don't, I find that a little offensive. I think people are taking a risk going on reality TV. They can hurt their career, for instance. They, they always pull the dirt out on all the American Idol people. And on For Love or Money, they found out that Rob was in the JAG Corps and, and he had the whole groping incident. And the law firm that he worked for told him not to come back when he was done with the show. Here are some other real thoughts that they had to share on reality TV. Isn't ABC just a high class pimp? My favorite reality show is probably The Bachelor. Why? 
Um, I just love watching the 25 girls competing for the one guy. It's pretty funny. They get a little bit catty. It's a good time. I think there's tons of game playing on reality TV, just like there is in the real world. On The Bachelor, I just could not believe it when Alex had told Trista that, that she was the one that he was going to pick. And just like in the real world, she slept with him. And then he turns out picking the other person who he doesn't even continue a relationship with after the show. Survivor's like finished, it's played out. The first season was good and now it's like called Rechauffé in French, like reheated. On every show they say at the end, they're like, oh, we're down to the final rose ceremony. And they say, oh yes, and I find myself, I could actually be falling for more than one person. I'm actually falling in love with more than one person. I don't, I never thought this could happen. I mean, come on, they don't all, and then, then suddenly, they're, they're all like emotionally like, like struggling to figure out which one they want, but at the end of the show they're like, yeah, I knew all along that you were the one. <laughs> That's so fake. It's very fake. There's always a twist on all the reality shows, and they just want to see what the reaction will be, not only of the people on the show, but the people watching. For instance, on Big Brother, they had the twist that they brought in everyone's ex-significant other. And on Joe Millionaire, they had the twist of you either pick the million or you pick Joe. I think that we have seen um, a couple contestants on The Bachelor that have been a little wacko. And I don't think that her eval, her psychological eval, or their psychological evals were very accurate. I think it is. I think the media releases what information they want to release. And I think the show did a great job of getting a story out there and making people believe that it was what actually was happening when it really wasn't and they just fed the media information. So I think that is reality. The media is always feeding us information and we choose to believe it. Well, it's like a manufactured reality. I mean, it's not, you can't say it's true reality. It's not like two people walking down the road not knowing the camera's on them. They do act differently with the camera on them, but. Right. But yeah, to an extent, it's, I mean, it's what really happened. So. One of the reasons why we're all getting into reality TV is that when Real World came along, a lot of us were past the age to audition and get onto the show. And now it, these are shows that, that we can get on. And I think that's one of the reasons why everyone is so into reality TV and being a part of it. Because she was fabulous. She was absolutely fabulous. A true rock star. It was like a rock star on heels. Oh, absolutely. She was just, she would play tennis and she would have spiked heels on and she was just crazy and funky and fun. We loved her. Lots and, of personality. Yeah, tons of personality. And actually for a while after the show we were, everything was, that's Tina Fabulous. It was our new adjective. <laughs> I liked her. She was smart, witty, and uh, pretty much all around fabulous. Probably the first season, if you watch the real world New York, they were still, you know, it was regular people, you know. You know, you did have people that were going after certain careers, but they were kind of ordinary, whereas the shows now have become, you know, it's the pretty face, you know, the pretty body, you know, and that's what they're all about, which really aren't real people. They're just people that are segueing into, you know, wanting to be in Hollywood. Reality TV is the new game show. We're all watching it. It's one big competition. We always like to see who wins at the end. It's in race, you have these people traveling around the world, but the thing is they're always with someone that they have some kind of bond with. And like I was saying earlier, usually if you have two people that have some kind of bond, you're going to see more friction <laughs> than you would see with people that don't. You know, it's amazing the people that are your best friends sometimes are the ones that you end up having the worst arguments with. It's getting kind of far-fetched now when they're... They're putting the, home, the heterosexuals on, and they're trying to find a heterosexual mate, but they have the homosexuals. Not that it matters. They have the homosexuals mixed in also. I think that's, that's getting a little bit not reality. The people that you never hear from anymore that were on these reality shows, I think those are more the real people. The people that end up making careers out of these reality shows, you've got to think, you know, well, you know, how real is that? I think it's, uh, it's okay to a certain degree, but I really don't. I don't really think it's a good direction for TV to be going in. I think reality TV is going gonna, is gonna to meet its end at one point or another, and then they're just going to have to come up with the next big thing. I think that it's getting to the point where they're just overrunning, totally overplaying it. Everyone seems to enjoy it, although I think it's going out of its heyday. I'm sure it'll die out sometime, and then they'll run out of fresh ideas and run out of fresh faces, but for the time being, it's just, you know, it's just entertainment. As much, though, as I can like, sit here and judge these shows, I do watch them. I, I, my roommates and I sit around and watch them all the time. And I don't know why. He was 
cute also, you know, they were charmed by his looks and his cash. Yeah, but isn't that with all women? <laughs> hey, no. <laughs> Not at all. Some women are different. It's just these morons that audition to be on these dumbass shows. <laughs> Those type of women. <laughs> what do you think, Eric? I think, uh... I don't really know. I didn't really... S I didn't watch Joe Millionaire. Not a big reality TV buff. Joe is sexy, though. And he probably is a really nice guy. We should all treat him as a human being. <laughs> That's so corny, don't <laughs> Lying to America. I don't. I'd prefer real reality. Just, just Fox viewers. Jeez, Ivan. Come over there and lick your cheek.